2023 is officially over. So in this video, we're going to dive into my dividend portfolio and first take a look at how it did in December of this year for our normal monthly uh, dividend update video. And then I'll go and look at 2023 as a whole, look at what significant purchases we made in the portfolio, um, all the dividends we received, and you know how the portfolio performed against the overall market and what i'm looking to improve upon in the coming year so first of all i want to take a look at what the portfolio looked like at the beginning of 2023 in january so i'll go back and look actually at my dividend update video from last january and as we can see here, the portfolio value at that point in time was just $3,728 with projected dividend income of just over $100 um, and a five-year dividend CAGR on average of 7.6%. Um, so those are kind of the metrics we're looking at at the beginning of 2023. And if we look at my portfolio right now, um, this is pretty much at the beginning of December. The portfolio was valued around $8,370. So over a doubling in that time period and dividend income was at $206, um, which has also doubled in that time period as well, um, which is very exciting. And in that time, the actual yield on the portfolio has gone up um, and the five-year dividend CAGR average has gone up. Um, the yield part is partly due to the market uh, coming down some, but it also did come back up, you know, towards the end of the year. So that was partly, um, you know, my purchases uh, to some regard. Now we are going to go into Fidelity and look at what I did in December. Uh, so these are all the transactions sorted out for the month of December. So we can just download uh, this CSV file and then import it into my spreadsheet and uh, see what happened this month. So we're back in the spreadsheet, just going to go to file import. And I have made some tutorials on the channel where I uh, showcase some of these scripts I've made, which are free for anyone to use if you do so desire. Um, it does require a little bit of setup, but really not all that much um, technical skill, I would say. So just going to import all the data, it'll import that CSV file into a new sheet, and then I can just run this script, which is gonna parse all of those transactions and put them into my spreadsheet in the appropriate position. All right, so the script has finished up and we can see the short summary here. We deposited $432 this month, buys of about $95, and we received dividends of $25.38. So we'll look into what exactly that entailed. Um, we can see here, two cash deposits. The uh, first one here is actually just credit card rewards that I get deposited directly into my uh, account. Fidelity has a nice 2% cashback card and you can just get those rewards deposited into any of your investment accounts, which is cool. And then for the actual buys, not much going on. Uh, $25 of Pfizer, $25 of Procter & Gamble, $25 in Johnson & Johnson, and then $20 more of Procter & Gamble. Uh, so really nothing in the second half of the month that I bought. We can look at the dividends here, starting out with Aflac, a lot of dividends this month. So starting out with Aflac, $1.02, Pfizer, $1.51, Johnson & Johnson, $4.86, Southern Company, $2.57, uh, Amcor, $0.84, uh, 3M, $3.10, Microsoft, $0.96, Coca-Cola, $0.84. Um, we got a cash dividend or interest on our cash of $8.01. Um, Lockheed Martin, $1.04, and the Travelers, $0.63 cents there. Um, so we can go to our monthly dividends graph and see yet another record month of dividends this December, which is pretty exciting. The past six to eight months, as you can see, I've kind of grown the dividends a little bit more quickly. And I think that's mainly due to interest on our cash. So um, first of all, interest rates have gone up, but then also I have more cash in my account as we'll look um, in a second. I have a pretty substantial amount of cash in my account actually. And that completes the quarter as well. So $66.16 this quarter, yet another record quarter. And then on the year, $193.36. Um, pretty close to $200, but not quite there. I'm sure we'll get there uh, next year, but we can see actually more than, well, not quite, close to a tripling of dividends in 2023 compared to 2022. Uh, definitely over double. Double is around $145, so we blew that out of the water, uh, which is pretty exciting. And we can go look at uh, some other summary metrics. So let's see here. 
we can look at ticker changes and look at which companies performed the best in December um, right here. So in December, sort by performance, we can see that most of the companies were positive. Um, only a few were in the negative for the month and they were just down a few percent. Procter & Gamble and Apple down about two and a half and three percent. Microsoft and the Southern Company down uh, just about one percent. And then everything else was in the positive this month uh, with Caterpillar up 14 percent, AbbVie up 11 percent, uh, Leggin Platt and 3M up about 10 percent. Uh, so pretty solid month. The looks like the Santa rally did actually come in December yet again, which is cool to see. Um, and then if we look uh, invested per ticker, not much to see there since I didn't actually make many purchases for the month. Value over time, we can take a look at um, doing good, uh, still just steady growth over time, which is really what I like to see. And we can see January 1st, 2023, this, you know, we're, like I said before, more than double since then, which is really awesome to see. And we finally have a $10,000 uh, marker on the graph so getting close to that ten thousand dollar milestone actually uh, definitely think i'll hit it this year for sure so going back to the summary sheet here we can see uh, all of our positions amcor is the smallest position at less than one percent of the portfolio and then hp uh, is the largest position at almost 10% of the portfolio, almost a $900 value there. Um, so that's exciting. Getting some positions that are pretty substantial, you know, in the $200, $300, $400 range of equity, uh, which I think is cool to see. And, you know, I'm sure this year we'll have some positions with equity over $1,000, um, at least I would hope. Um, I guess there's no requirement for that to happen, but I'm just saying I think that will most likely happen just given the nature of the growth of the portfolio. And also cash is sitting at $1,900, which is over 21% of the portfolio. Um, a fifth of the portfolio is in cash right now. So definitely trying to get some of that deployed. Um, we can see information technology is 29% right now, um, largely due to my big purchases of HP and Texas Instruments this year. Um, so that's kind of pretty heavy part of the portfolio. And uh, like I said, I am trying to deploy some cash, but at least right now, given, you know, November, December kind of run ups, I don't really see um, a lot of great opportunities. And, you know, despite that, there are certain positions that I'm going to keep buying um, into just because I want to own them long term, even if they're not at great prices. Um, we can move over here and look at kind of the summary metrics. So portfolio value, $8,835, uh, projected dividend income, $210. So only, I think, about $4 increase from um, the beginning of December, uh, which isn't all that significant. Average five-year CAGR, 7.7%, and dividend yield, 3.04%, uh, which, like I've said, is a little bit higher than the yield has been on my portfolio in the past. So I'm really hoping some companies um, with lower yields and higher growth rates can you know get back to more reasonable levels. I would love to buy some more like Apple and Microsoft and you know Lockheed Martin and uh, Carrier Global and stuff like that, but I think those companies are just kind of at too high of prices for the most part right now. Uh, we did get two dividend increases this month, which I didn't talk about yet. So 2.4% uh, raise from Pfizer, uh, which is solid, but nothing to write home about. And then 2.7% raise from Carrier Global, um, which again is solid, but nothing crazy. Carrier Global, um, the first few years so far after their spinoff um, from United Technologies, they have uh, been growing the dividend at a much higher rate, you know, in the 20 to 30, 50% range. So it makes sense that um, they've slowed that dividend growth rate down now, but I'm sure um, over the long term, they can probably keep it up higher than 3%, I would hope and guess at least. So now I wanna look at some metrics that will um, kind of showcase how the portfolio has done throughout the whole year of 2023. So like we saw before, um, you know, the dividend income and value of the portfolio has more than doubled this year. So at the beginning of uh, 2023, the value of the portfolio was a little bit below $4,000. And now it's, you know, well over $8,000, almost $9,000. So definitely a big doubling there. And then uh, in terms of dividend income, the dividend income was right about $100. And now it's um, a little bit over $200. So double there. Um, and then in terms of five-year dividend CAGR, um, I think the dividend CAGR was 
a little bit above seven and a half percent um, at the beginning of the year, and it's just a tiny bit higher at this point in time at 7.7 percent. Uh, so, in terms of that, it's kind of stayed pretty much the same for dividend CAGR, but uh, we did have uh, drop off throughout the year, and we we're kind of in a downtrend in terms of the companies I was buying and the way that was affecting the dividend CAGR. But I did reverse that trend. Um, for the most part, I would say, and have seen a big increase in dividend CAGR in the last few months of the year, which I'm pretty happy about. And if we go and look at um, invested per ticker, this can kind of give us an idea of you know how I invested my money throughout the entire year into what companies. So we'll start out January 1st and end at uh, December 31st of this year. So if we look at total amount invested, um, we had three companies that I did not invest in at all, Carrier Global, Lockheed Martin, and Caterpillar. And good news is that I have already invested in those in 2024 within the first few, uh, few days already um, because I have a rule that says if I haven't invested in a company in a year and I want to continue owning it, then I should buy some more um, so that you know I continue buying more over time. Then if we go down here to the companies I invested the most in, uh, starting out with cash, we deployed uh, $4,395 of capital into the portfolio in terms of you know deposits from my bank account. And uh, some of that was from credit card rewards, maybe 50 or $75, I'm not really sure. Um, something like that, probably less than $100 from credit card rewards. Um, and then the rest was just from my bank account. And then in terms of stocks, we deposited or we invested almost $800, $798 into HBQ to buy 29 shares. We invested $600 into Texas Instruments, $500 into Johnson & Johnson. So those were pretty much the big three that we invested into. About $169 into AbbVie and $100 into 3M. Um, and then, you know, most of the other companies we invested, you know, $10, $20, $50, $75 into um, throughout the year. So nothing crazy there. And if we look at dividends we received, um, we can see Carrier Global was the smallest in dividends, $1.92. And going all the way up to Johnson & Johnson and Leg and Platt, which were both over $14. Um, but this year, um, interest was actually a big contributor with cash, our interest on our cash of $56. So Again, like I said at the beginning of the video, that was largely due to higher interest rates on our cash, you know, about 5% right now, I think, maybe even above that. And then also, you know, having a lot more cash. So pretty much, I think throughout the second half of the year from July onward, I think I had at least $1,000 of cash in the, account, in the account at all times earning interest. And um, honestly, I've kind of used Fidelity in the second half of the year as kind of a bank account. Um, so I do have you know, bank accounts that are, you know, outside of Fidelity, but I keep most of my cash in Fidelity in some other, um, they're technically investment accounts, but I just have them in the money market fund because those funds earn a lot more interest than my actual bank account. So um, that's kind of what I've done in terms of investing throughout the year. Uh, we can also look at ticker changes to see how all of our companies performed uh, throughout the whole year and see which performed the best and which performed the worst and sort by performance. And this will be really exciting. So Pfizer, by far our worst performer, down 42% this year, uh, followed by Leg and Platt, Amcor, um, which were both down almost 20%. And then Air Products and Chemicals, Johnson & Johnson and 3M were down about 10%. Um, and it looks like about you know, five or six more companies were down, you know, one to 5% uh, in that kind of range. And then we had some big winners as well with Microsoft up 55%, Apple up 48%, uh, Carrier Global up 36%, and JP Morgan up 27%. So uh, pretty cool to see some of those companies doing very well. And also, if we kind of look at these companies in the top five, um, I have a lot more invested in these companies in the top five um, than I do have in these companies in the bottom five. Um, actually, I do have quite a lot in Johnson & Johnson, but um, you know that's only down 10%, which isn't really too bad. And I've been buying you know, pretty much very consistently throughout the year and have definitely been taking advantage of those lower prices on Johnson & Johnson. So I'm pretty happy with that. 
and then finally uh, we can go back and look at yearly dividends again just in case we forgot so 193 dollars in dividends for 2023 actually 193 dollars and 36 cents don't want to forget those few cents uh, so pretty exciting there and i'm sure in 2024 we'll be well above 200 dollars in dividends maybe even above 300 dollars so I also wanted to take a look at how the portfolio performed on a percentage basis and compare that to the overall market. So this year in 2023, the portfolio returned 10.72% which was uh, honestly not that great when we compare it to the overall market of 26.3% for the S&P 500 and 26.1% for the Dow Jones. But that's a pretty stellar year for both of those indexes. So um, I'm really not too disappointed that I didn't keep up with those. Um, and for me, you know, I think longer term is a little bit of a better outlook to look at. So we can see uh, over the past three years, my portfolio has returned 12.9% on average, which is beating both the S&P 500 and Dow Jones. Um, I think I will be at a big challenge to actually beat the markets over five years when I do get that data. So it'll still be close to two years before I do get some five-year data, um, but I'll definitely be excited to see uh, what that looks like at that point in time. But you know, for now, I can still say that I am being the market, um, at least over the past three years. Um, we'll have to see how the market does in 2024. If it is kind of a flat or down year, I would say I think there's a pretty good chance that my portfolio can beat the market. Um, but if, you know, it's another fantastic year like we had this year, then um, I think it's probably most likely not going to beat the market. Um, that's just kind of how my portfolio is structured, I think. And finally, in terms of how I want to continue investing in 2024 and where I want my investing to go, um, I think I'm going to be kind of cautiously continuing on the same path as I am right now for the most part. Um, I like where the portfolio is going in terms of uh, continuing to invest into these high quality companies and being patient with the prices uh, because I think that's important as well. And also, you know, finding the right companies that can help me increase my dividend growth um, as opposed to focusing on yield alone. I'm probably going to have some big life changes coming up in 2024 though. So I'm going to try to be kind of cautious and not too aggressive with my investing um, just to kind of keep some cash on the sidelines in you know, just my bank accounts and whatever, uh, so that I have some extra cash. I would say through the first nine months of the year, I'm probably not going to have much income. Uh, so that's, you know, kind of why I'm doing that. And then towards the end of the year, if I do have more income and still cash left over, then I can invest more aggressively at that point in time. And that's kind of what I'm looking to do with my Roth IRA specifically. Um, so initially for my Roth IRA, I was just going to max it all out at the beginning of the year because, you know, I have the cash on hand to do that. But after some more thinking, um, I'm probably going to contribute about half the contribution uh, right now and then just wait until pretty much the end of the year to finish out um, 2024's contribution if I can, because, um, you know, you can still um, contribute to your Roth IRA up until like April of the next year. So realistically, I still have in April until April of 2025 to finish out my Roth IRA for 2024. So uh, like I said, just trying to be a little bit cautious and not very aggressive with my investing this year as um, I'm not exactly sure what the year will hold. So thanks for watching to the end of the video. I really do appreciate it. I hope everyone had a fantastic 2023 and um, let me know how your portfolios did. And I'm hoping everyone has a great 2024 as well, filled with lots of success and investing gains. Thanks again for sticking around to the end of the video. I really do appreciate it. If you want to chat more, uh, feel free to join my free Discord server, and I'll see you all in the next one.